okay, everybody, welcome to the show. Tonight, we're excited to welcome my brother, Brett. We're going to talk about backyard lax games, which I'll get a text or an email weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, bi-monthly from someone being like, hey, how do you do this version, that version? I presented on it at the convention last year. Uh, didn't even know it because we grew up just playing all these things that, that a lot of people don't. And, and everybody's been on the show already. Bradley Voigt, Brandon Bomberry, all talk about playing backyard games. John Grant Jr., Casey Powell, we'll get into all that later. But Brett, if you don't know, um, the quickest rundown I can give, two-time MLL champion, one with the Rat- Rochester Rattlers, one with the Toronto Nationals, uh, All-American goal- goalie at Albany, also played on the man up um, with a short stick at Albany, made the Elite Eight, made the NLL as a forward, so he's got great offensive stick skills, speaking of which was the two-time MLL stick trip, stick trick champion, one here in Denver, the, the iconic famous one where you jumped up. <sighs> when I get better, when I get a producer, shout out anybody who wants to produce the show for me, um we could they could cut in now like a picture of that that'd be cool i can't do that it takes too much time uh coach women's lacrosse at university of syracuse with gary gate and reggie thorpe made the national championship and katie rowan made the national championship game twice um then went on coach to albany when blaze reardon scored the big goal and and uh lyle thompson um and now pll man with the chrome coaching down in florida probably missed a few things but it's hard to do the whole bios when they have as many accolades as you brett welcome to the show thanks for having me good to be here give you a a raise up on the fizzy tonight we got lacroix lemoncello fizzies Uh, oh that's a good one man that's really good you fill up a cup with ice and then a little zest of the lemon on top if you want to get fancy it's really good delicious yeah i haven't done that yet i just i just need it out of the can we're trying to get Lacroix or, or some fizzy water to fit to sponsor the show um because we love funny it. story for a couple of years i thought lacrosse was going to be renamed Lacroix, and Lacroix was just going to sponsor pro lacrosse and rename it rebrand it Lacroix. Not, i not thought it was a good idea, idea. Uh, people told me i was crazy though not turned out cool. i was crazy uh it could still happen i mean they're probably listening to the show i'll tag them um but we'll get right into it backyard games the the number one game that we played growing up which we didn't even give it a name we just fired the ball back and forth at each other and we played with a hard ball i'll start by just saying we gave it a name we gave it a name we did not at first right but when do you remember when we did name it and what was it named it was named full goal so we called it full goal let's play full goal um, when I just, I do remember when the Democrat and Chronicle wrote an article about our family, we, we had named it by that point. So that was when you were like a freshman in high school. I, I remember when, grade. when he came to interview us and Democrat and Chronicle for those listeners, Rochester paper, and they did a headline calls first family of lacrosse. And I remember dad telling him like, tell him that game you guys play. And I remember distinctly thinking like, we didn't like everyone plays this game. Um, turn, turns out they don't. So <laughs> we're here today still talking about a full goal. We played growing up with a hard ball, but I just want to get it right out of the way. All these, all these games we play now with tennis balls. We encourage you all at home to play with tennis balls. Um, you, you need to put the proper headwear on if you're shooting super hard. If not, you can play without um, if you have control. But, but we played full goal growing up with the hard ball and, and where we – where we, did we start it in the backyard or at your memory is so much better. Well, it was there. It was different. So like we didn't always have a tennis ball and we didn't always have a lacrosse ball. So the games always changed on what we had. Um, but the full goal game that we played in the backyard was usually with a tennis ball. When we played full goal with a real ball, it was at the uh, chicken coop. It was in the box rank and the rules were different. So like the, the, for people that, so to explain the rules of full goal, that we play now and we played when we were younger is you have mini goals that are maybe at roughly like 10 yards, 10 to 12 yards apart. And you have a tennis ball and you're trying to score on the other goalie. And if you shoot and you totally miss the goal and it doesn't touch anybody that the other shooter gets to shoot from his goal. But if you hit the goalie or you hit the pipe or the net or any part of the other goalie, they have to shoot wherever the ball lands. But when we played full goal at the chicken coop with a lacrosse ball, we had boards. So it didn't matter if you hit the shooter 
or the goalie or not, you could play the ball wherever it went off of the boards. I forgot so that we, I totally forgot that we fired the ball at the like 50 yard boards to get to, I told, that's why I wanted you on the show. And we played it. So like it got, it, it, it was a lot of gamesmanship. So like the, the goalie would come out because you couldn't just score. Like we just shot from end to end. It was hard to score. What was the distance? Probably 50, 55, probably 50 yards. 60 yards. Yeah, but the, the goals o- were probably, the goals were probably 40 yards apart. The other thing, the, I, the, the, the other thing was that it was, it was just so people at home know that the terrain was so j- so jagged like it wasn't level yeah. like it was gravel ish the with... strategy would be to try to skip it a yard or two in front of the player so it would you know bounce up and and it, you'd have fear that it would hit you in the eye so you'd get out of the way yeah and it would go in but then the other strategy would be is you would come out to like midcourt to make them like try to throw it lob it over you or then we try to like shoot it off the sideboards to angle it in so there's a lot of gamesmanship that goes into the game and in the way you play it. And every time we played it, it was a different, there was different rules and there was different strategies of how to win, you know? Yeah. I mean, and well, if we, if we started with the full goal, we played at the chick group. We're talking, the goals are 40, 50 yards away. Um, mm-hmm. Like I just mentioned, people come up out of the net. The worm burner was the big shot because you try to rip it um, and really get like three, four bounces in. We were a lot younger, so it was it was kind of harder to get those on cage. But um, that was more fun. We would tell most people goalie wars when we tell them like, "Hey, this game it's one on one." We just say goalie wars because that's what people play. But you know, most people I've ever seen that say they're playing goalie wars, their version of goalie wars is to stand in, in two goals like ten to fifteen yards apart, and they got a bunch of balls in each goal, and they just fire. And it's cranky and it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 It's big at um, goalie camps with not at our goalie camps, but um, I've seen other people do that. So I've, you know, it's eat like when I presented at the convention last year, I called our game full goal. I just call it goalie wars. I've been calling it that probably 15 years now, just because it's easier to tell people, but the full goal, you know, other than playing on the, the box ring, we had them super far apart. And we, we didn't move them up. We, we play, our version of goalie wars full goal mostly. And that's the one that, that bomber came out and said, that's the game he plays is a slump in senior a um, Bradley says, he'll play that game all day. Bradley's very good at it. Um, so let's go back. You kind of talked about the rules of that. So let's say our version, we call it full goal. Other people call it goalie wars, but our rules are different. You mentioned. So. Um, well, first off, like the big, the big rule that, that we're different than most people is we didn't allow crank shots. You couldn't, you couldn't double hop, step, crank. I mean, we they, a lot of games ended up getting to that point because we were so competitive, and you know, um, you know, I, I turned out to be a pretty good goalie. So you know, you you well, need, I told can, my, you I told turn players that, really hard. I tell our so, players that now when we teach them, they're like, "Well, what do you mean you can't? How hard can you shoot?" And I'm like, you know, you get that little smile, and you're like, you know, somebody's got to win. I always tell them, I'm like, I played growing up against who's now, I think, one of the greatest goalies ever. I mean, you're obviously one of the greatest. Oh, no I, question. No yeah, question. About but, that. I mean, I put you as, like, number one. But um, I got you a little higher yeah. than some people. But You're the only one, but thanks for saying that. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, you had, to, you had to figure out, you know, eventually you turn up the notch. We'll talk about speed lacrosse and three by a little bit later. All these games come back to you have to figure out a speed that's going to work for both you. And, and so you even start with the – let's just start with where the goals go. You said 10 yards. I mean, sometimes if you want, like if the two players really want to shoot a little bit harder, all you got to do is move it back, right? Yeah, just move it back. Yeah. You, just, you make the adjustment. I think the, the best part about the goalie uh, full goal game that we played growing up was it, 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 it allowed us to pass and catch at a fast rate. So our shots were, more, were like really crisp passes with accuracy or bounce shots and the other player would would either catch it and shoot right away or block it into a spot where they get a better shot and it was it was it was almost like tennis or pong it would be like bang back and forth back and forth back and forth you know um you never like to play a game when the guy would miss the goal you know when you miss the goal <laughs> you just keep missing so and they, people were cranking or trying to shoot hard for the corners it didn't there was no there was no back and forth and for myself and, and you who enjoy 
competitive games. And we found the best way for us to play without getting in fights, which was an issue for us, that to, to, to do that, you have to be accurate and try to play with some more skill involved. You know, eventually, they're, like you said, somebody's got to win. So, you know, you usually what? shot a lot harder than I could. So um, you would win. But um, I, I think that's the best way to train when, when you play this game. And that's the way I try to teach my kids that I coach here in Naples uh, when they're playing the game. And, and, and most of them, they, they really take to that, that style. And the idea of hitting the pipe or getting the rebound and then having that gamesmanship of now you have to make your shot on cage. So people don't understand that. Like, well, if I hit the pipe and it's 100 yards away, I can just chuck the ball and run back. It's like, no, you have to make an effort to put it on cage and you have to run back. So that's just another element of the game that the kids love. Well, the ping pong and the, and the tennis, I mean, you know that. So for people at home, they're trying to figure out how do you set it up. That's really, you got to find the length between the two goals that lets you have that game where, where it, like I can score, but I don't want to score every shot. Like you, you know, that like the game's not fun unless there's big time rallies. I always want to call it a volley. Is it a volley or a rally? It's a volley. Yeah. There's big time it, volleys. It can back be and, both. It can yeah, be back both. and forth, back and forth. You know, you hit on a lot of the, of the reasons why you should play the game. We should probably back up and go with that. Um, as you were just talking I run a diamond passing drill. A lot of passing drills we try to run where I try to get kids to flip their hips quick and then be able to move it. And they, it's one of those drills where they don't want to do it. Right. And as you're just saying, um, you got to flip your hips to catch that shot quicker and then get your shot off. That was one I didn't even realize is such a thing that the game's teaching you to do because the quicker you get your shot off, the more reaction the other goalie is going to have. And the, the thing that all these games have is just reps on reps on reps. And you just said passing and catching. The thing I've had people be like, well, why would I want to play goalie? And, and, you know, we want the goals far enough apart that I can catch, make a really athletic catch or save. But I've found this game, the older I get to be one of the best games to teach people how to make bad catches. There's a spontaneous is, catch. Yeah. It's a bad, it's a, it's a hard pass to catch. So that's yeah. what you're working on. Exactly yeah. So right. we don't. And then uh, off of that, you're making the catch and then you're having to turn and shoot. So you're gaining your balance off of off of a bad pass and then trying to make a bit on goal and not a six by six goal either three by three which is even harder yeah, smaller net and, and really and you've said it already and, and especially at the chicken coop i mean the bounce shot comes into play a lot and, and figuring out how to how to maybe fake and, and you used to shoot behind the back it took me forever to figure out how to shoot behind the back but um you know those things you start to do and and when bradley plays like little 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 backhands little flips um, but it's really the reps. So ideally you probably want to have, if you can, we know as kids, we only had one or two balls usually, and we kept chase that ball forever, but it, it's best played. I think with, with three or four in your net. Um, but like you, so you can pick them up and shoot, but like you mentioned, um, it's not fun if somebody's just missing the goal nonstop. So let's say ideal, um, ideal game. We're playing to three, right? Games to three, the score. Games to five. We're going to go to five. We always go to five. You know what I said? You got better memory than me. I at camps and stuff, we'll, we drop it down to three. Yeah, and we get the rotation and kids. There's so many there, kids but there. We, but we always we always play the five. Shout out Steve Trombley, uh, Hotbed Lacrosse. Talked to him this week. Sponsor of the show. Um, we just got four. <laughs> we just got we just got four new box nets at DU because you need you need a bunch of them if you're going to do this with your team, like at a big practice. So you can play with two or three. One goal. It's just not enough. Just uh, there's no, like we said, there's no back and forth if you play to one. So, um, but if you got a lot of goals and you got, and you got enough, so not a ton of people are standing around, we play to five. Um, like Brett mentioned earlier, the swings are big, but the, the big rule to start that I always start with is let's say I'm the first shooter. I can step up far enough. So my stick's not hitting the net, but I can't be taking three crow hops into a shot. So we'll start there. And like we said, we figured out what the speed is that I need to take for the shot. So, you know, I like to come sidearm with it a little bit because that gives me uh, I'm, uh, a little bit more angle, better for my shot and the bounce shot option. I've never been a good overhand shooter. Um, so that, that's how I like to play it. Um, and I'm trying to find a bounce, a bounce to get by Brett on the goal. But 
if I miss, let's say my first shot, I miss everything. Brett is able, Brett, unless we're not out of balls, Brett is able to pick up a ball and shoot. Now he can do that quick too. So if I missed a shot and I'm, I'm being lazy, and this is why it's a really fun game too for, you know, if you got a lazy attacker or somebody that you're trying to figure, trying to teach to play faster, uh, Brett could pick that up quick, fire it in my net. Um, so let's say Brett did that. He's up one nothing. I got another shot. So I'm on shot two. Um, again, I can't run up five yards to shoot on Brett. Um, I got to shoot where I'm at. And now I hit Brett. You know, I'm pretty good shot. Not too hard. He doesn't call heat. We'll get overheat in a minute, but it's a good shot. It comes up seven yards. So now Brett's three yards from the goal and Brett talk to him what you're going to do and how it works, how the rules work. Well, if it hits me and it goes towards your net, I'm going to let the ball roll to give it as much time to get as close to your net as I can. I don't want it to go by your net and then give myself space and I want to finish it, you know. Um, if it hit me. And, and that's really where the game differentiates. So other people, if I hit you in the shoulder and it rolls all the way close to my net, it's three yards away, um, they would just pick up a new ball and play a new ball. But that's what makes this full goal. So now Brett's at three yards and, and can the goalie check the stick? You know, can I, uh, those, I... those, those rules often <laughs> change on your mood on yeah. whether, you, whether you were, whether, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I feel like if they throw a couple too many fakes and they're in their within stick distance and reach, you could do that. Um, you know, you're not allowed to, as the guy's picking it up, you can't just check them. But once he has possession and he's, eyed up on you and he's throwing fakes and yeah you can check him i agree i kind of go by the girls lacrosse rule on that on that check like like you said you gotta let the, it's their ball it's their shot. His body yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, can, it's their ball it's, across the body. Yeah. no no hitting it's their ball it's their shot but if they throw seven fakes and their sticks like exposed right in front of you then you can give it a little touch so of you course, know I'm, yeah. a big rules guy i i you know coach kids coach camps you, you gotta have the rules ready so once, let's say I make a big save on Brett. So right now the score is one nothing. Brett. He's got the three-yard shot. This is what makes the game really fun. And if you've ever seen Brett play goalie, um, you kind of, you know, a lot of this comes from that. So now let's say, and I'm not a big-time saver, so I, I'm trying to hit it with my body maybe. Let's say I chicken-winged it and Brett's sprinting back. I can shoot this ball as soon as I get it. And what happens so many times and what makes this game a lot of people's favorite game Brett, well, I'll just put it on net, try to go quick, and Brett will make some sort of one hand sliding. If it, it was always fun to play when it was raining out, because you you could really. And we had a downhill slope in our yard, <laughs> and you you were down the downhill a lot of times. I remember, but um, you know you could go down there and slide and get it. So now Brett makes a miraculous save. It's still one nothing. Brett, we're playing to five. Um, he's got another shot. You know wherever that ball lies. Um, now. Brett, anything to add on that? <laughs> are, are we going to go through a full imaginary game? A little bit more, a little bit, a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. You know, I, it's hard for people to grasp this, man. I mean, I had someone it with seems me. seems so at, simple to me. I know but, it does, but I had someone I, with yeah. me at convention last year going through this, and they've been texting me like, oh, I can't remember the rules. Like, I'm telling you, I get this text a lot. Like, so, um, so you make the so same. Like the, oh, the only other, like, rules that I can think of that are really – really important are the ones where like you hit if you shot and hit my pipe or hit me and it went beyond my net or let's say hit the pipe and when that then went back at your net but went way past your net so there's like no possibility of me scoring because i'm behind your net what do i do then with the ball you that's know, the big play of the game i mean that's the big one that people we got to explain to people how it works. So, so the big thing is the, the way and the way that I tell kids that we play it now is like, you, you have to make it, the ball has to travel within five yards of the goal. So there's like, a, just imagine like a big circle, I do five that. Yard circle around I the goal. A crease, right? Like a big a crease, crease circle. Yep. Yeah. And you can have two options. Like if I'm behind the net, I can throw it through that area of the goal. And it, and it can hit the goalie or miss totally. Now, if it misses totally, they can pick up a ball from their goal if they have one in it right. and throw it in an open net. The other option is the sky ball when you throw it way up in the air and then you make a sprint back to your goal. But that sky ball's got to land 
within a five yard radius. Of- and the sky ball is fun. I mean, the sky ball is really fun. And I, and it's kind of, a- those are the best, those are the best plays of the game is when you throw the sky ball and you sprint back and dike a diving save. So what Brett's so- talking about right now, it's Brett's shot. He's up one, nothing. Let's say he'd hit the pipe and it went, and this will happen. Like I just mentioned, we played on a hill. So we, sometimes we'd be running way down that by that big tree that had the, the stink bombs under it. <laughs> Um, so I got, I got to throw that ball 30 yards, maybe in the air. And like Brett just said, get it in that circle area, which would be a crease around the goal, um, and make it back to my goal. Now, while Brett's waiting to catch it, um, I'm sprinting the whole way. And so many times, if you, if you hustle, you can get there. I got a clip, like I said, if I get somebody to produce a show for me, eventually they could throw it on right now. Cause we made one when we were playing down in Florida back in March, um, because we did see, because that was just our understanding of how to play the game. But as we started to teach this game to kids at camps um, and practices, they immediately just started throwing that ball away. And we're like, whoa, you can't play that way. You got There's got to be some some, uh, some gamesmanship, as you were calling it earlier. Uh, right, and you get two tries at it. So if you don't get it within the five yards the first time, you shoot again. And if you don't do it again, then they get a penalty shot, which is just an open net shot. You get yep. to shoot with nobody in the net, so – so two chances at it. And then um, the other thing, the other caveat is that I play, and I know you play as well, is if that offensive player, so I'm the one chucking it, let's say I'm chucking that sky ball towards Brett's net and I'm sprinting back and he catches it, let's say eight yards away. And we said, hey, it's got to be five. If Brett decides to shoot that, that's on Brett. Um, oh, if I, t- if I touch it at all. Yeah, if you so touch, yeah, you play that. If I, make any, if I touch it at all, it's in play. It's yeah. like a foul ball in baseball. Yeah. You know, cut, yeah. It's in, it's in play. And so, and, and just to reiterate again, so if I, let's say I'm doing this, the sky ball and I throw it like to the next planet um, or through Brett, you know, he can pick it up and shoot it if he's got an extra ball in his net, because that is remember back to rule one. If we miss everything, it, it as soon as it's missed pretty much goal line, you're allowed to, you're allowed to shoot. Um so that game playing five, it, it can get you real tired. Like Brendan Bomberry said, you know, he plays, he's dripping sweat. I know Bradley, Brad, I watched last time I watched you and Bradley play, it got pretty intense. Um, never once. I've never lost to Bradley in goalie wars. You haven't? Never once. He can be me. He can definitely be me. <laughs> I'm just, I, it's amazing to me how I've never got good at goalie through playing this game so much, but I always focused on my shot more than, more than the goaltending, but um, how do you use this in practice? I know I came down um, to watch you coach about five years ago now, and, and you were on a club team, and you had everybody playing. And I was like, whoa. And and we've had – we used to argue about it at camps where you used to want to do it all day, and I'd be like, we got to do some old-school drills. And then um, yeah. I've completely come around because, the, like I mentioned, the passing drills where I try to teach these skills that I want taught, I, I – they just don't want to learn them in passing drills, but they will do it in this drill. Uh, we got a kid at DU right now. We, we played this game last year. As soon as we, she learned it, she just loved it. Um, and, and I'm just watching her get 80 shots in a five minute game. Whereas in a stick drill, she might get four shots, you know, like stick, like shooting drills are slow, even if you maximize them. So how, do, how are you using it currently? Are you playing it at your practices or, or, or how are you using goalie wars or well, full goal? We'll call it full goal. Sorry. You know, not as much as I want, just because that you have to put out a lot 15, of you have to put out like 16 goals. So um, when I have my camps or clinics and and those type of events and stuff like that, like uh, the summer camp I ran in Florida, we we did it every day. You know, I like to set up the little nets. Um, for all my practices early. So when I get there, I'll get there like an hour early. I set them up. So when people show up like a half an hour early, they just go out and play. Um, and then the kids. You started practice. doing that when we came, when you came to Texas a couple of years ago, I thought it was genius. Cause usually we wait to teach them the game and stuff. You started playing it in the beginning and just set this whole different vibe. You just set, you just set the field up. When yeah. you set the field up and you have the goals there. And you and put the gets, balls in the ball like and don't say around, anything like, to the kids. Yeah, Just let like, them go play. And then by the time practice is supposed to start, there's always people are always late anyways. Um, <laughs> and they don't want to put their equipment on. 
you know, I'm a, I'm actually a huge advocate of kids not wearing equipment <laughs> as much because I never liked wearing equipment. It's, you know, I, I don't like wearing gloves and arm pads and helmet and it's just a lot more fun to me to have your stick. So yeah, you played, um, a, you played in a, a goalie in a game without a cup and a chest protector as a, what, what like fifth grader. Um, you don't like pads? Yeah. He, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I've played games without a cup on. It's so bad. <laughs> He's just so scared to tell dad that I forgot my cup. That <laughs> yeah. The punishment of not, you know, having your proper equipment was worse than getting hit. <laughs> Yeah, but the, it, I mean, it is kid. I mean, especially where your coach is hot. But I thought going back to to you running it beforehand, especially like we did a clinic in, in Austin, Texas, and we didn't know anyone. It was the first time kids were coming to our event. I just moved to Texas. Now I'm in Denver. But um, you know that I heard you, that you playing. Yeah, I post about it. You playing that game though. It, it was just another one of those light bulb moments for me when you played it. Cause normally we played it at the end of camp and then the, you know, the kids would be pumped by then, but that awkwardness, that first 10, 15 minutes when the kids are like, is this going to be fun? And why am I here? It was cold and wet too that day. It was like 37 and raining uh, muddy field. And as soon as you started playing what we call speed now, we used to just call like backyard, let's get, get your buddies and play. And we'll walk through that. Um, but you played on the two, the two four by fours. I think we had set up with the tennis balls. I got videos of it and, it, and the kids were just so happy um, to be playing, but uh, it is hard to run the, this drill in, in regular team practices. Cause not enough nets. Like you just mentioned, one thing we discovered um, kind of, I thought the box nets would fit in my, in my uh, SUV like six years ago, when we were running a camp in St. Louis. It was like 110 degrees. Uh, we got those, those pug soccer pop-up nets um, for you coaches at home. If, if you want to get in a lot of nets, I know Chris Hansen's using them now um, in Penyan. And those are really, Brett's got one right there. If you're watching on the YouTube <laughs> with son van, if you follow him on Instagram at King Queener, um, make sure you follow Queener Lex, follow us all, but you'll see van van shooting lefty on that thing. He only picks up one hand ground balls, huh? Strictly one hand ground ball guy. I've uh, yet to see him pick up a two ground, two hand ground ball, but he's really good at it. So, you know, if you can pull it off, I'm going to let you do it. One of the reasons I love coaching with Liza at, at DU, I mean, we, we got a bunch of kids who are great at one hand pickups and she doesn't, she doesn't tell them not to do it. And I just think it's, it, it, you know, let's get, let's see if he can just do it for his whole life. Um, <laughs> if he could have, but well, he's never going to have to play on grass. So they play on the turf, like, you know, all the no time. Problem. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So. Um, I guess the other thing, I mean, for me, for goalie wars, it, it's hard. Um, one way I've used it in practice lately is to have half the kids do a drill and half the kids do goalie wars. Um, it is once they learn, sorry, full goal, commonly referred to as goalie wars by other people, but our rules are different. So once we really teach them the rules of full goal, it's really all they want to play. Um, and I know some coaches don't love it because it's not a lot of running, but it, it, like we mentioned, it is, if you do it the right, the right way. Um, so the other game we play a lot, we can just shift gears on games and we feel like we taught everybody how to play that game. We feel good about that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so full goal, there's going to be videos about it eventually. I don't know. It's hard for me to make these things. Um, Shout out anybody who wants to produce. I mean, it's just simply put, it's the best game that I've ever played in in the game in lacrosse, you know. And I've been around, you know, 36 years. I've been playing lacrosse for 36 years. And it's still the most enjoyable games to play, you know. And so that's where I put it at. Oh, that's high praise. And, you know, the last time I really played it was against Coach Hobart at our Penny camp. And he's – he doesn't look it, but he's over 50 and he had a blast and it's neat that you can still play it with people and hopefully we'll play it for a long time. Um, well, that was, that was, again, that, and then that's a great point. Like that was where it's such an awesome things. We would play in our backyard with our uncle and our dad. And, you know, now we play, you know, with our cousins and I'm, I'm playing with my son the same type of game and you know so it's it's a game that can cross generations like you can you know you don't have to 
be able to run still to play it. You know, you can, you know, uh, you can play with the whole family. So that's, that's why I love it. And for us, we can play with our teams too, because it's not, you know, I mean, you're still playing PLL. It's not like, it's like, Oh, coach Queener beat me in practice. Like that's not really that cool for me. I don't love it. I don't love getting in the normal drills, um, but playing this game's fun. It's just like, Hey, yeah. let's play. Let's you know, we can, and we can kind of control the shots a lot better. So we know how to make the game. I, I'm finally, this might be the first time I've admitted it getting to the point where like, I'm okay with somebody beating me at something um, if they're getting better. So maybe that means I'm like a real coach now. <laughs> so I'll give some lollipops if, if it makes that kid have to like learn how to play the game a little better. You know how they, the first couple, because. Wait, so I, you're saying you're okay with losing if you're, if you're giving the game up and you're, so you're kind of throwing the game. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If, as long as it's getting my one. So of you're the, not, but like if you were going as hard as you could and you lost, you're, you're, you're not, you're, are you okay with that? I'm getting weirdly like more okay with it. Like, I, I don't know. I, that's not good, know. man. I know. I, well, that's why, that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm retired. You know, that's why I'm retired from, but I oh, love retired. How's that pension? <laughs> no, I'm retired from lacrosse. You know, obviously oh, like yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. I'm retired from professional lacrosse. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Still looking for the pension uh, producers, pension, anybody throw them yeah. in. Uh, there's a subscribe. I think there's a donate button on here. A lot of people need to hit that thing a little bit more. <laughs> Um, but how'd your Venmo request go for your birthday? I think it ain't like nobody <laughs> threw me any money. Yeah. And mom and dad gave me less money than they've ever given me. And they, uh, somebody else was like, you got money for your birthday from your parents. I'm like, yeah, I did. And I needed more, you know, it's budget funny. cut season. Um, all right. Other mini games. 